Everyone thinks that lions are fierce and cruel animals. Lions are a large felidae living in Africa and Asia and have the largest average body weight in existence. They are also the only bisexual animals in the world. They are pack animals and the female lion who is powerful in the pride will become the lion king, while the male lion will stray away from its birthplace when it is an adult. Lions are territorial and will fight each other, but not all lions are vicious and brutal. Let's take a look at different lions together. The sky was clear. Several volunteers were driving their green trucks to go home. One volunteer was looking out the window. The truck pulled slowly into an overgrown section of road, and the golden grass was growing tall. Suddenly, the volunteer shouted for the driver Mike to stop because there was an injured lion. The dying lion on the ground seemed to sense the hope of surviving, so it snorted softly, its voice extremely weak. It appeared to be sending out a final distress call to volunteers. At that time its hair was soaked with sweat and mucus and there was a faint trace of blood, as if it had just been born. The volunteers saw the lion so weak and decided to take it home for treatment. On the way home the lion slept soundly. Soon they would be home. The lion seemed to understand what they were saying, it hummed softly, as if it knew it was home, and then it cupped its head on the volunteer who was holding it. At that time, the sun had already gone down, and the volunteers were not in a hurry to eat. But they were scrambling to bathe the weak lion. But it was too weak, everyone was afraid of hurting it, so they all backed away, leaving only one volunteer to bathe it. The other volunteers did not rest, they handed towels, shower gels and showers respectively. The lion enjoyed it very much and didn't move the whole time. Just when it was about to take a bath, it let out a comfortable bark. After taking a shower, they blow dry its hair with a hairdryer. After washing for a while, the clean lion lay lazily on the sofa. It was really cute. With a big head and a wide mouth, a white beard on the face, golden hair on the neck and yellowish back, and a ball of hair on its long tail. There were still many spots on its forehead, dotted like stars on it. It became a lot more beautiful after the bath. And the volunteers repeatedly praised it as cute. Careful volunteers also took it to the veterinary hospital to check if it was healthy and bought it a lot of food. After the lion arrived, they decided to buy it and the cat a bigger house. After returning home, the lion was sent to a mother cat. The mother cat came up to sniff the sudden arrival of the lion and scratched it. The lion blinked, perhaps because they were similar, and the mother cat seemed to care for and love it like its baby. Volunteers bought separate nests for them and placed the nests in a corner of the living room. The volunteers, the lion and the mother cat all seemed to have fallen asleep peacefully after dinner. Maybe they were too tired. Something seemed to happen that night. The volunteers were surprised to find that their relationship seemed to be getting better. They seemed a little shy the first night, so they slept in their respective dens. The next day they slowly ripened and played together and ran up and down the hall. After a while, they seemed to be tired from playing, and the lion moved towards the mother cat and lay down on it. It was really like a picture of a mother sleeping with her naughty child. Then one day, the lion deliberately threw the ball of wool on the table, so they chased the ball of wool in the hall. Their feelings spanned races. Seeing this cute cat mother and this lion, the volunteers had no reason to be angry, they said they were still young. As time passed, the lion became more active. At that time, when it saw the volunteers coming back from outside, it would take the initiative to greet them and rub their head against the corners of their trousers. And the volunteers would respond enthusiastically to it and touch its head, it would turn its head in cooperation, like a puppy. 
When the volunteers returned home, they were no longer tired after seeing the two animals. The cat mother loved the lion very much. While eating, the mother cat would grab the lion's paws with its paws, as if telling it to eat. Sometimes the mother cat would find food for the lion and hold it in front of it after knowing that the lion had no appetite. When the lion was bored, the mother cat would comfort it to play with it. It stayed by the lion's side until the lion grew bigger and outgrown it. After that, the volunteers could only take it to the zoo. It is not easy to meet, and even more so to part. A few days before the separation, the cat mother stayed with the lion and did not want to leave. There seemed to be tears in its eyes, like a mother who was reluctant to part. The lion also seemed to feel its strangeness, so it was not happy. But the day of parting would always come. Both the cat and the lion were in tears that day. And the volunteers took many photos with the lion as a souvenir. Years later, the cat mother saw the lion again with the help of people. At that time, the lion was not the same as before but became more mature. At that time, its hair changed from pale yellow to deep golden yellow. And it always revealed its dignity, majesty and wisdom, and it was very majestic and large. But when it saw the mother cat, it became obedient in an instant, rubbed it as affectionately as before and held it carefully in its arms. Perhaps they hadn't seen each other for many years. So they both shed tears of happiness at that time. This is a true story that happened in the UK. It is understood that the lion has given birth to a litter of cubs and is living happily. Another story is that the protagonists are the lion cub, Zara, and the cat, Tom. At that time, they were very happy and loved each other and kissed each other every day. One day Zara suddenly left because Zara was going to separate from its parents and start a new life in Africa, but Tom would not leave with it. Later, Zara successfully joined the family of the owner of the Kim Simmons Zoo and met other cats and became good friends with them. The owner prepared a lot of milk for Zara and fed it herself. Soon after, Zara set off for the Uganda Wildlife Education Center in East Africa. The owner said that as long as it was happy, she would be happy. She also said that she was very reluctant to Zara, but she thought that Zara would never forget her. All the lions born at Linton Zoo were later moved to Uganda and Zara was filmed by a film crew who planned to make a documentary about Zara which is scheduled to be screened this year. According to the report, in 2022, there will be only 23,000 lions left in the world. Therefore, lions have been listed as critically endangered animals and are first-class protected animals in my country. But many people are still killing them in large numbers. It is hoped that everyone will stop hunting them. To protect animals is to protect ourselves. When an old fisherman noticed a bear in need sitting next to him, he immediately sprang into action. He was used to hunting, tracking, and killing, but this bear made him do something that he had never even considered. Near the remote town of Kalino in far western Russia, Foka Sergev lived a quiet life. Since his wife had died ten years earlier, he did everything himself, cooking, cleaning, and maintenance. In these parts of the world, there were no handymen to call in, and Foka's job went far beyond taking care of his household because his home was so isolated. He had to hunt for his own food too, as the nearest shopping center was almost an hour away. He would go there if he were desperate, but that rarely happened, not more than once a month. So, to feed himself, that meant hunting with his rifle in the forest or taking his fishing equipment to the nearby river. There was no question about which one he preferred. In his working life, he had been a fisherman, working in almost any city that had a port in it, and he missed it. The long adventures with his crewmates, managing the onboard 70-foot, 23-meter, fishing boats and riding into the high seas, it was chaotic and dangerous, 
but they were some of the best days of his life. Even in the off-season, the men would go on fishing trips together. It was great bonding, and Foka longed for those days. Now, he didn't have any fishing buddies left. All he was left with were his memories. What connected him most was sitting by the river, fishing for food. Cleaning and gutting his prey was something he could do with his eyes closed, and he knew almost every species of fish by sight. Of course, his river fishing was a much smaller operation than he was used to, but it gave Foka something to do. Living near the forest all alone could be isolating. One balmy Thursday, Foka got more than he bargained for. His relaxed fishing time was interrupted by one of the deadliest animals on the planet, and it gave Foka a story to tell for years to come, even if nobody believed him. That day, he had already been out to collect firewood. When he finished stacking the branches, he looked up to the sky to see if the weather would make for a good fishing trip. The river was a 25-minute walk, and he didn't want to get caught in the rain. That thick dirt could quickly turn to mud and make the house almost inaccessible. There were some clouds in the distance, but Foka had a weather radar in his head. He could feel that the rain wouldn't come until evening. There was plenty of time to fish, so he put on his coat and boots, and packed his fishing gear before heading out. Before he knew it, Foka could hear the sound of the water streaming by. That's how he knew he was close. When he arrived, he unpacked to settle in for the day. He unfolded his camping chair, put bait on the end of the hooks, and tossed the line into the river. Foka had even brought a cooler with a couple of drinks to pass the time. From experience, he knew that he might be waiting for a while. It wasn't a huge river, and there wasn't too much activity. That's why he needed to stay out for at least a few hours. He was hoping to catch some salmon or maybe a small trout, nothing massive, just big enough to make himself a nice dinner. But something came to him much quicker than he expected. The only thing was, it wasn't from the river. Relaxing into his chair, a gentle breeze blew over Foka's body. He could feel the sunlight on his skin, and the sensation was so relaxing that he started drifting off to sleep. That's why he didn't notice something creeping up behind him. A shadow was moving up beside him. When Foka began to flutter his eyes and wake up, the sunlight snuck in through the slits of his eyelids, and he stretched his muscles in his chair. It did seem a little dark to him, but he didn't think much of it at first. Foka was half asleep and assumed it was a shadow from a tree. Besides, he had other fish to fry, and literally something was tugging on his line, and he could see that it had some force behind it. This jolted him into action. He picked up his fishing rod and began to reel it in, but it kept sliding loose. Soon, he was on his feet, fighting to pull the fish in. This was very unusual to have such a big catch in this river. Usually, they were small fish that you could fit in your hand. That's why he brought a small bucket with him. But this was a monster. Foka was eventually able to wrestle it to the surface of the water and hoisted it into the air with a swift movement. While it squirmed around on the line, he got his first real glimpse of its shape. Its body was long, smooth, and shiny, almost like an eel, and its mouth was gaping open, trying to find the water it was accustomed to. Foka recognized this fish, of course. It was a Siberian giant trout, sometimes known as a Siberian salmon. What was most impressive was its sheer size. It must have been more than 70 inches, 177 centimeters, by far the biggest fish he'd ever caught in this river. His first thought was how his drinking buddies at the nearest pub were going to react when he told them. He even considered taking it there to show them himself, in case they didn't believe him. Foka had to use all his strength to pull it back to land, and it continued to barrel and roll. He tossed it into the bucket to his right, waiting next to him, ready to gut. Letting out a big sigh, Foka was about to prepare to put another piece of bait on the line, but he was so concerned with the fish that he hadn't noticed what was on the other side of him to his left. With a deep breath, Foka leaned back into his chair. That's when he noticed it. He felt that something was sitting beside him, and to his horror, as he slowly turned his head, his instinct was proven right. Panting heavily, 
sitting just a few meters away from Foka, was a huge brown bear. Water was dripping off its fur as though it had just been swimming, and the grass underneath it had flattened under its weight. It was looking out towards the river, but as it noticed Foka, the animal turned its head to face him. The fisherman did have experience with bears, but never from this close. He was frozen in terror for what felt like an eternity, unsure of what to do. He looked the bear up and down, careful not to make any sudden movements, thinking that this animal could tear him apart within the space of a few minutes. But something was off. The bear looked sad, almost like it was crying, and it was staring at Foka with imploring eyes. That's when he spotted something sticking out of its foot. It was a giant thorn, and its other foot had scratches on it, suggesting that the bear had tried and failed to pick it out. It wasn't just tired, it was injured. The bear clearly noticed the man staring and looked down at its feet too, acknowledging its injury. It was in trouble and needed help. For some reason, Foka felt compassion for this bear. Maybe it was the way it sat next to him, almost like a fishing buddy, or the fact that it had been there for some time already without attacking him. So, he reached into his bag slowly and pulled out a gardener's glove he sometimes used. He slid his hand in and approached the bear, beginning to pull the thorn out. The bear winced in pain but remained pretty still. It only took a few moments, and once the thorn was out, the bear let out a big roar. Foka was thrilled that he could help, and he even tossed the giant fish he had just caught to it. The bear caught it in its mouth and backed off into the forest, where Foka spotted the silhouette of some cubs. She was a mother with babies in tow. Could it get any more magical than that? It's a story that Foka will never forget, but his friends still don't believe him, a 70-inch river fish and a bear sitting next to you. They suggested that maybe he never woke up from his nap. What a great story. Would you have dared approach the injured bear, and would you have gifted the giant fish to it? When an eagle swooped down to take a little boy away, his grandparents were surprised and scared. But the reason why this bird acts in this way will shock you. Leon's ancestors once lived in the beautiful mountains of North America. They have lived in and around green meadows, towering cliffs and majestic mountains for generations. Leon was born there, and he has been raising and herding various animals for many years. At the time, Leon's son was married and was expecting the birth of his first grandson. Leon was equally excited because he had never been a grandfather before. He is looking forward to meeting the new little member of his family. Maybe the child will continue to live and work in the area when he grows up, just like his generations. While Leon looked after his flock, he smiled and thought of introducing his grandson to the flock and showing him all the beautiful sights they were going to see. Babies will undoubtedly like to buy and bleed furry sheep. But Leon has been lost in his own world for a long time. Night fell, so he began to put the sheep back into a safe fence. After all, wolves live in the mountains and can easily kill a poor sheep. With the help of his son and his trusted dog, the trio drove the sheep in the direction they needed to go. It is important that they enclose every sheep, because they depend on them to help earn income. Now this is more important than ever, because the baby is about to be born. But one day, Leon wanted to try something different. His days are often repeated, doing the same thing day after day. Even his meals are the same. But one day, Leon tasted the hare. He had eaten this small rabbit-like animal when he was young, but he had not eaten it in recent years. So, one morning, he got up and picked up his equipment, and set out to look for the hare at the foot of the mountain. Grasping one of them to cook will be a pleasant enjoyment and a welcome change. The trek to the foot of the mountain took about half an hour, so he had to get there and return before noon in the morning in order to take care of his flock for the rest of the day. The sun has just risen, but the air has warmed up. To be sure, it will be another sunny and beautiful day. But as he was trekking, Leon heard a strange, unusual sound at the foot of the cliff. He still walked tirelessly through the forest, where he felt at home, and he knew all the roads that people walked in the area and all the animals in the forest. There is a forest stream not far from the hut. It flows out from under the stone. It is cold and delicious. 
Even if you drink a lot, you still want to continue drinking. Hate was there drinking and resting, and those who came from the village did not know that there was a source here, only he knew it, a spring that was hard to see in a hundred years, and who else could be in this wilderness besides him? It's inaccessible here. It was a voice he could not pinpoint accurately, but something drove him in that direction. Towards the bottom of the cliff, Leon's eyes were widened by the sight before him. It was a beautiful, huge and majestic eagle, but something was wrong. It screamed in pain. It seems to have damaged its wings. As soon as the eagle saw Leon, it wanted to flutter its wings and fly, but it never left the ground. Leon wondered if it had damaged its wings while fighting with animals. He guessed he would never know, but what he knew was that he had to help the poor bird. Leon took off his jacket and gently wrapped it around the eagle. It no longer struggles, just looks at him, as if praying for a man's help. Leon carried the eagle all the way home. He was amazed at how heavy and huge the birds were. They dive and soar all the way in the sky, and they don't look big. When he got home, Leon ordered his son to take the sheep to the field. Then he took the eagle to a room in his house, where he began to wash the injured wing and treat it with medicine, gauze and bandages. He even brought the eagle some meat to eat, hoping it would keep its strength. Once his work was done and he was satisfied with the eagle's wings, he created a habitat for it and brought it extra food and water during its recovery. Leon didn't want to keep the eagle forever. He just wanted to make sure it was safe and good enough to be put back into the wild. The eagle seemed to understand this, and was very grateful to the man for his efforts. But one day, the eagle finally recovered and could fly. So all the Leon family gathered outside and watched the beautiful bird soar into the air and fly back to the mountain where it used to be. But this is not the last time Leon will see the eagle. It would visit the house every few days, and even sit in the field next to Leon and guard his flock. This is an unlikely friendship, which stems from a kind and simple act. Ten months later, Leon finally had a grandson, a little boy named Tony. He was born in the family mansion and is a strong and beautiful child. One of the most amazing things about birthday is that the eagle greets the baby there. It watched with curiosity as Leon held his baby, then flew away screaming, circling happily in the air. Shortly after Tony was born, the whole family held a big party to celebrate the arrival of the new couple. Not only are all of Leon's family there, but the extended family has embarked on a journey to meet this new excellent member of their family. They brought food and presents, and everyone was chatting happily, eating, drinking, and above all, cooing to the beautiful little baby boy sitting in the crib in the middle of the room. Walking outside for a little fresh air, Leon heard a familiar scream. He knew at once that it was the eagle he had saved. He looked around and saw the eagle swooping down and landing only a few feet away from him. However, it behaved a little strangely, making strange chirps and flapping its huge wings from time to time. Leon frowned, wondering if he wanted to meet the baby, so he went into the room and held Tony. No sooner had he returned outside, however, than the eagle flapped his wings into the air, but just as it did so it seized Tony's little shoulder and flew away with him. Leon got a fright, and the whole person froze in place. What is the eagle doing? Why would it do that? When he came to his senses, Leon ran into the house and shouted that the eagle had taken the child. They ran out without thinking and began to chase the eagle flying not far away. People are afraid that the eagle will leave the child. If this happens, the result will be disastrous. But the family chased for less than a minute, and there was a huge rumble behind them. Turning around, they looked in the direction of the house where they were just now. In front of them, there was a towering cliff, which had begun to collapse. Several huge boulders began to fall from the cliff, and several of them smashed into the house and smashed it like paper. The whole family watched in amazement, and just then the eagle came back with Tony, gently laid him on the ground, and then jumped back a few feet so that he could be quickly picked up by his parents. When everyone was running around the baby, watching him and making sure he was all right, Leon walked over to the eagle. Somehow, the eagle knew that the landslide was coming, 
and he knew to save the child. Leon was unable to express his gratitude and gratitude to the bird. Perhaps this is the eagle's way to repay Leon's kindness. He would never really know, but all he knew was that the bird had saved all their lives, for which he would always be grateful.